you've got any uh, cell phones, would you please put them on side in the library so as not to disturb the proceedings of tonight's uh, meeting. Uh, with that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, I'll entertain the roll call at this time. Uh, Trustee Abraham? Here. Trustee Benson? Present. Trustee Hagrid? Here. President Jones? Here. Trustee McGreer? Here. Trustee Moore? Here. Trustee Brown Marino? Here. May we all stand for the pledge of allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we all have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Item number two, public comment. Ida Hot, please. Um, I have a question. First of all, I would like to know if Ida could come out and change that light over there on 17th and 14th Street. I waited five minutes there. I hate to say <laughs> there was no cars coming. It was just like lined up behind me. So. Okay. But I'm, it's always that way after a certain time at night. I mean, at like about five in the afternoon already, you just stand there and you wait and you wait and you wait. I've said, uh, said at the same level. Pardon? I've said I've said at the same level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't figure out why they can't change the timer on that. Okay. Then my other question is, is, this is just for my own information, but um, does anybody else ever get these uh, things about um, your sewer lines being covered by insurance? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Is this a good thing? I've always wanted to know. Is this something I'll, that we should... I'll let Public Works address that in tonight's meeting. Okay. okay. Through the course okay. of tonight's meeting, because we went through a process and you must not have been at the other board meeting, but no, we'll I talk wasn't. about it. I'll let okay. them talk about it. Okay, thank you. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. You want to just that one? Yeah, just. All right. Uh, Jorine Gordon. Hi, I just have a couple comments. I've also been stuck at that light. And I just, sometimes if you back up and go forward and back up and go forward, it will work. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I but that's only if there's no cars behind you. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Anyways, um, I have a comment about uh, the legal fees that were mentioned last time that are generated by Trustee John Marino. It just seems like they're getting to be extensive. I understand they're over 50000 now. And I, I wonder if there's anything we can do to cut that down or stop it or... Now, uh, it's all about our, our, our pockets and could the person be billed for? Okay. Thank you. Your, your comment is noted, Ms. Gordon, and uh, we'll try to adjust the best we can throughout the course of the nice meeting. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that was, all the, that was all the comments. Okay, thanks. Item number three, consideration to approve the following minutes of January 19, 2013. Motion to approve. Yeah. I have a question, Mr. Mayor. It is January 19th, and I have uh, copies of February 19th. So is it February 19th, or we're, or we're considering the approving uh, January 19th? I, I think the clerk misspoke. I think it is February 19th. It is February So 19th. we're on February 19th? Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second on the motion? I'll second it. Okay, it's been probably motioned by Trustee Morris and probably second by Trustee Abraham to approve the minutes of February 19th. Uh, questions, comments, or corrections on the minutes starting with Trustee Brown Marino? None. Trustee Morris? None. Uh, Trustee McGreer? I'm going to abstain from the vote. I did not get a chance to read it, so none. Okay. Uh, Trustee Arbor? No. Trustee Benson? No. Trustee Abraham? No. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Well, I've got one abstention. Um, I've got two abstains. I, uh, yeah. I'm abstaining. I don't know if you were counting me in that. Okay, well. Let's, let's, let's go with a roll call at this point. Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Hagrid? Yes. Trustee McGreer? I, get, I didn't get a chance to read it, so abstain, please. Trustee Morris? Yes. Trustee Brown Marino? And since I wasn't here last week, um, or last meeting, I'm abstaining. Okay. It, well, we're going to pass these because I'm going to approve them also, uh, having read the minutes and, and seeing that they're basically accurate in their content. So uh, at this point, uh, these minutes will be passed and made part of the record. Item number four, 
Considerations to approve expenditure grant total all funds, $397,136.64. Motion to approve. Second. Kendra, probably motion by Trustee Morris and probably second by Trustee Abraham to uh, approve the uh, expenditures for this month. Um, report from finance? Yes. Well, we have AT&T at $4,948.75. Blue Cross Blue Shield, $102,844.89. Broadview Westchester Water Agencies, $102,843.32. Group, $3,077.39. Comment. Huh? Comment is $3,077. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I see it. I see it. And then group uh, is $39,483.98. Geno's Plumbing, $7,195. God of Life Insurance, $7,571.73. The Law Offices of Lawrence and Delino, $20,718.75. The Law Office of Michael R. Davis, $12,749.80. The law of Sophia Fanaro, $15,876.03. MFA Construction, $7,916.68. Mid America Water, $4,857.19. Petroleum Technology, $6,329.68. Robert M. Hodge Law Office, $6,199.80. SNI Global, uh, $7,814.17 and West Cook County Solid Waste $12,674.39 which is uh, $363,101.55 which is 91% of the total bill. Okay, so those are the larger bills that we have for this month for those that are in the audience. Uh, questions or comments or corrections from the board? Uh, starting with Trustee Yes, I um, I have a concern about the payment to SNI Global Enterprises of $7,814.17. As I said, I wasn't here for the last uh, board meeting, but I did listen to the uh, the videotape of that meeting, and I was hoping that there would have been some discussion about why we were approving another facade application for SNI Global. Earlier today I asked for a list of payments and it appears that's that may be something that's in my that was left in my mailbox. But my concern is and it took me a while to find this because unlike the application that was presented and approved in May, May 21st of 2012, the um, facade improvement program description was not included with this application. But the consideration of application paragraph five on page four says that not more than one facade improvement agreement shall be approved for a building or property in any fiscal year and then uh, shall not be approved if a facade improvement grant was made for the same portion of the building within the previous three years. So as I said, we approved a facade uh, application on May 21st of 2012, this would be the second one that was approved at the last board meeting in the same fiscal year. Um, as I said, and I was hoping that there would have been some discussion at the meeting that would have made this a little bit clearer or that I could have gotten a response earlier than, than just now. So do we have an explanation as to why we have approved two facade applications for these people in a I fiscal year? I don't have an explanation on why two were approved. I just know that I've only been expensed for one. I, I did not see an expense for the first one, and I don't know if, if they carried it out or not. Uh, Mr. Attorney? Yes. This is the only to make. So the first one, while it was approved, did not get acted on, and so we got the second one. That's what I think happened. Uh, let me know if there's something different. So they, they made the, the initial application, but there was no action taken on it by them nor by us after the application was approved. Uh, there's no expenditures. And what I gave you guys in your boxes was the history that we had as it relates to SNI Global plus their uh, other entity name. And that should have been in all the trustees' boxes when you got in here today. So Well, and, and once again, I would have followed up with these questions had I received that 
this morning when I first asked. Well, I didn't get, I didn't get the request until late this afternoon. Uh, Trustee Manuel, the, the request came to me around 3 4 o'clock, and I had it printed up and I put it in everybody's box for review. Now, uh, number. Mr. Gray, this, this passed the last meeting. Right. This this was approved at the last meeting. This is that actually the submission for payment. Right. And, and then you got the payment on here right now. Now the um, here, uh, number six from the same. Uh, again, this is the facade improvement program description. Number six uh, lays out the provisions that are to be followed if the necessary building um, improvements are not made within 180 days of the approval. So I'm wondering, did any of this take place? Did we simply scrap it and start over? And, and let me just say this. I would, I would ask that we pull this payment until the next board meeting and give us a chance to examine this rather than pay it and then possibly have to uh, try and recover the money later. Okay, is that your only uh, concern, Trustee William? Yes. Okay, your, your concern is noted for the record, and I will move on to the next trustee. <coughs> trustee Moore? No. No questions. Trustee uh, McGuire? Yes, sir. I have a couple of um, concerns for the uh, board members and the constituents here. There were three invoices for law offices that Trustee Morris read. One is for the law offices of Lawrence and Delino in the amount of $20,718.75. One is law offices of Michael R. Davies, $12,749.80. One is for Robert M. Hodge law offices for $6,199.80. These three invoices alone total just about $40,000, $39,668.35. These three attorneys were here on the Village of Broadview's behalf with the petition objections dealing with the campaigns and the um, election process. Unnecessary spending of, of our tax dollars that we had to suffer through for almost four weeks, three and a half weeks to be exact. And some of the processes are still going on. Not making this political, but this is unnecessary. And these, are, these people that are objecting are the same ones that are trying to get into your town as, as elected officials so I'm very very concerned about forty thousand dollars plus stuff that's not even on this list for us to pay mm -hmm. unnecessary that's my only comment Mr. Mayor. Okay. you know and, and it, it's point is well taken and it may be unnecessary but it's just part of the, the, the process It's part of the uh, process for municipality as it relates to running an election objections happen things things occur and we have a responsibility to actually convene a board to respond to the objections uh, because the normal personnel that would be on the board, Kevin, are actually in this election. We could not preside over the board, so we had to uh, allow the uh, county to appoint them. They appointed these attorneys, and, and we're stuck with the uh, the bill, so to speak. So, and there's still one more. Did it, did it get that way? Excuse me. And there's still one more. And there's that still would be one coming. more outstanding, right? It hasn't. I haven't received the uh, the final. Uh, this is for the uh, uh, the attorney for the electoral board and two of the uh, board members that presided over several of the boards. And there's one attorney left that uh, I did not have the uh, correct. I have not seen the invoice on just yet. So just just so everybody knows, it's it's not you know wasteful spending on on our part. We didn't have any control over this. It's, Objections had to be heard, and it just took a lot of uh, research and time. Uh, Trustee Harvey. I'm going to agree with Trustee McGreer. Um, I looked at both and kind of was like, okay. Um, so I'm not going to expound upon that. But I have a question in regard to the chief is not here for the police department, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Thank you, Lance. Okay. Um, <laughs> We have a lot of clothing expenses <coughs> for the different offices. I'm wondering if that still applies to the ones that I want to see or separated right now. Do they still qualify for the expenses? Oh, yes, it does. It's, it's part of the new contract that anybody under the collective bargaining agreement is uh, still um, required to provide uh, it to them. Okay, that, that was my only question about that. That's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Trustee. You know, Trustee Benson. You know, I mean, I definitely agree with Trustee McGrill regarding all of these law firms and all of these expenses. 
However, I do understand why it had to occur, but I'm just really frustrated with all the lawsuits and all the bills that we need to turn as our legal fees. And my frustration is not uh, just regarding the electoral board hearing officers, it's regarding the other expenses that other people on the board have uh, have uh, incurred here with the village. All the law expenses regarding, uh, what is it called? motions to intervene in the lawsuits. I mean, it, to me, it's, it's quite ridiculous how many, how much we're spending on legal fees. I mean, it really is, it's just ridiculous. Uh, that's my only comment. That concludes my report on these um, expenses. Thank you, Trustee Jensen. Uh, Trustee Abraham. Well, Mayor, you know, I've been commenting on for the past few weeks with the opposite of the legal expenses, so to my fellow trustees, uh, Trustee McClure, Harvard, and Benson, thank you for obviously uh, looking at, at these a little bit more closely as, as it is burdensome uh, on our taxpaying residents. And like I said before, residents, these are things you should know about what, what the village has to go through. So again, uh, for the mayor to explain it, obviously it was a process that we have no control. You know, and, and you just hope you didn't have, we don't have to deal with it, you know, I mean, you don't sit there when we make a budget and say, oh, we're going to have X amount of legal fees or even the, the other uh, thing the last few weeks with people intervening in lawsuits that we have real attorneys dealing with. I mean, those are the things that upset me and, you know, and, and again, I just, I concur with all my fellow trustees on this matter. Well, it's, it's just unfortunate. You just have to suffer and permit There's not a whole lot you can do about it, folks. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just what we have to deal with. So, um, Madam Clerk, uh, 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 may I have a roll call on these bills, please? Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Jensen? Yes. Trustee Hartwick? Yes. Trustee McGuire? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Brown Marino? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries to uh, pay the invoices as presented. Item number five, um, reports of the village officer will be at our next board meeting. Item number six, communication, we have none. Item number seven, none. Item number eight, eight. Consideration of a resolution approving the request of Rocky Beach Baseball to conduct its annual parade on April 27, 2013 at 11 a.m. for the village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Um, okay, the motion by Trustee McGreer and second by Trustee Harvard uh, to approve this. Uh, Chief, you want to report from, uh, want to report on what you're finding from the safety committee? Yeah, I'm just making it. Trustee Gonzalez. Yeah. Broadview Baseball presented a request to us to hold an annual parade on April 27th. Um, the request went to the safety committee. We looked at it. They have this parade of each and every year, and uh, each year we have officers from the street, little system of traffic. And I believe uh, a copy of the memo went to Director Aim as far as where the uh, barricades to be placed for this. So we recommend that be approved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, question or comments from the members of the board, starting with Trustee Brown Marino. Uh, just that in light of the weather that we're expecting tonight and tomorrow, it's really nice to be thinking about baseball. baseball. <laughs> and uh, other than that, no. No comment. Trustee Moore? No. Trustee McGrath? No comment. Trustee Harvard? No, I'm not. Trustee Benson? What I remember, we'll have the police escort uh, with the parade, correct? Oh, I believe it will be, yeah. Police and the fire department was out here, too. Fire department yeah, right. Oh, Benson. Yeah. Trustee Abraham? No. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed. Hearing no opposition, um, the parade will go on as scheduled and requested. Madam Clerk? Item number 8B, consideration of an ordinance approving employment separation and release agreement by between the Village of Broadview and Scott Carson for the Village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Motion to approve. Second. Probably motion by Trustee McGreer and probably second by Trustee Harvard to approve this. Uh, Carson's, uh, our fire inspector, is taking an early retirement and is going to be leaving the uh, fire department. Uh, do we have an effective date on that? Uh, did you get that? 
Yeah, and I know it's 30 days. Is it 30 or 60 days? I think it's 60 days. Because I don't have it in front of me. Anyway, so, so our fire inspector will be here for about another month and a half or two months probably uh, before his departure. I, I wish him well in his future endeavors. Uh, questions or comments from the members of the board, starting with Trustee Brown Marino? Just that I wish him well and, and it's a loss to our village. Absolutely. Trustee Morris? No. <laughs> I'm sure I'll see Scott between now and then, but I want to thank him for years for the years of service he's put in, and um, wish him good luck in his future endeavors as well. Trustee Harvey, Trustee Benson. My goodness, Kevin said exactly verbatim what yeah. I wanted to say. <laughs> he was reading I, your notes. I, yes, <laughs> uh, I need you to tell him to stop. Um, I want to thank Scott Carlson for all of his service, as I have called him on many times regarding the businesses and whether or not they pass their inspection. And he has no problem with me calling him 10 many times. So he has definitely helped me a lot. I appreciate his help and I want to thank him and I want to wish him well in his future endeavors. That is it. Thank you, Trustee Benson. Trustee Abraham. I just want to uh, compliment him on his years of service that he's uh, given to our village. I just want to wish him well and enjoy his uh, retirement. Yeah, 60 days is correct. 60 days. I know, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. All, right. All opposed. Hearing no opposition, um, that motion carries to uh, approve the separation for Mr. Carson. Mr. Mayor, because it requires a payment, do Does it require a payment? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, the dollar amount's not even in it. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's in the contract, not. Well, uh, well, I know it's in the contract. I just, we weren't approving the contract. We were just approving the fact that we were leaving. That's fine. Um, what, what's the dollar amount that we're going to pay? We approved in the separation agreement, right? Right. Okay, that's yeah. 23. Yeah. We still take a roll call, right? Well, we'll take the roll call. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Harvard? Yes. Trustee McGrath? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Brown Marino? Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Item number nine, application for the sole expense fund, grand total of eight thousand two hundred and twenty dollars. Back up. Oh, I'm sorry. Back up. I'm sorry. Item eight C. Consideration of a motion approving the hiring of a police officer for the village of Broadview County to the state of Illinois. Motion to approve. Second. Probably motion by Trustee Morris and probably second by Trustee Abraham uh, to approve the uh, <coughs> uh, police officer. Uh, Debbie Wagner, you want to tell us what we got going on with this one? Yeah, on um, November 20th, uh, we met myself and the chief and command staff and director, uh, finance director, James Baptiste. We met with uh, Sergeant Tim Gaynor and the State Police. Um, they offered us a grant, a four year grant, uh, up to $83,005 each year to pay towards the salary and benefits of an officer from our department would be on their task force full time. Um, what that would provide us is obviously $83,000 a year that we can apply towards hiring a new officer at that on the streets. It would also provide the department um, a nine member investigative task force that would be on call 24 seven to us and would um, come out and investigate any kind of crime involving vehicles, specifically motor vehicle thefts, burglaries, thefts um, vehicles, things like that. We've had some issues with that in the past right. year. So I think that'll be a really good um, asset to provide. Um, there was a uh, memo uh, provided also, I don't know who got a copy of it, but it does explain what it would cost the, the village each year if you were to hire an officer outright. And then essentially what the uh, reduced amount would be with this grant it really is it's the same as $83,000 a year. So we really um, recommend that the board approve to hire a new officer um, because uh, an opportunity like this isn't going to come up very often to have this kind of grant. And it's not even a grant we have to go ahead and apply for it that we may have a chance to get. This, just is, give it to this is us. This is ours right now if the board approves this. They, they handed us the grant. Okay. Thank, thank you for your report. Uh, but hang on a second because yes, you may have some questions from the board starting with Trustee Brown Marino. You got any questions for Debbie Wagner? 
Yes, and, and I apologize. What was the organization that is supplying this grant? Yeah, it's calling email. It's the Northwest Metro Auto Festival. <coughs> no, Northwest Metro. <coughs> A uh, and that is made up of, of which organizations? Um, that's, it's the Illinois State Police Task Force, and they have officers from other departments on this task force. Um, okay. And how long is this, uh, does this grant apply? Is it for one year and we reapply? Four years. Four years. Four years right. And I apologize. I'm, Wonderful. And the 83.5 uh, thousand dollars a year, I just want to establish for, for the audience more than for myself, includes their salary and benefits. Right, up to 83,005 dollars. So it wouldn't be a full salary package for that officer right. to go there, but it would sure cover a lot. It, it certainly would. would. provide a big um, savings to us to hire a new officer, which we, you know, we really need. Right. Absolutely. Uh, what that also does, too, that officer assigned to the task force would be assigned a vehicle. Mm -hmm. However, the village would have to um, ensure the vehicle, provide maintenance and gas and stuff for it. But it would be a vehicle for this officer to use while on this task force. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Moore? No. Trustee McGuire? Yeah, I had basically the same question regarding the benefit as well as the salary. However, um, on this while on this task force, that officer will be dealing with auto thefts only? Is that what I heard you say? Well, you know, any crime, it's mostly auto thefts, but a lot of other crimes are involved with vehicles. The auto thefts, auto burglaries, um, thefts from vehicles, um, situations, a lot of crime in itself, even violent crime involves vehicles. So they, they provide a lot of resources to tracking vehicles also. So if you have an instance where there's a violent crime that occurs in Broadview or Street or whatever, and we get this information on the vehicle itself, they have resources outside of what we have to track these vehicles down to apprehend these offenders and crimes. Did they have any specifications saying that with the transfer an officer over, or do we have to actually do a new hire, or is it somebody that they recommend? Like, they well, well, what, 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 our, what our plan is is to um, send a senior officer to the task force, okay. and with that, hire a new officer. And, and if, Amy, as you're well aware, a, a new officer on the street provides a whole different dynamic than a senior officer would, as far as you know, um, is being more assertive energy. and a lot more energy, and we need that kind of um, a dynamic on the street with you know, <coughs> you know what we have going on with drugs and you know, community and violent crime. So they didn't have a stipulation that it had to be a new officer that we could use a better officer. They didn't have. To. No, no, we will. Yeah, it's up to the department to recommend we're going to the next. Okay. The only thing I guess I want to reiterate with this is that we, the only thing we'll be paying for will be the gas for the vehicle and the insurance on the vehicle. And maintenance. And the maintenance for the vehicle. Now this is not a vehicle that um, we're supplying the officer. If it's a vehicle they're supplying the officer. Yes. Right. So all, that's the only three things we're paying for. Right. Insurance, maintenance, and the gas. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. That's what right. I thought. I thought I understood this correctly. <laughs> and it was? Like it, it costs more than $83,000 for an officer. Yes. The difference in benefits and salary. Benefits and expenses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what we're saying. <coughs> go ahead. No, I'm going to say, I mean, I can go through the numbers of what it would cost for us to hire an, out, a number, an officer outright brand new right now. Go ahead. And it's going to be just a $83,000 reduction each year. You know, so instead of us, like in year one, instead of us paying $122,605.50, it's only going to cost us $39,000. Six hundred dollars and fifty cents okay. for that year. So we're going to get that full amount is going to be um, given to the department to um, you have to pay for the, the salary, towards the salary benefits of the officer in that task force, right? which is going to be at a higher um, salary, anyways, as a senior officer. Where it would be a new officer and he starts off at a low pay grade, you know, on the first five years. Does the No, I don't have any questions. I have none, Chief. Uh, I mean, uh, Deputy Chief, I've talked to the Chief extensively about it. So, uh, with that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Thank you. Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Vincent? Yes. Trustee Harvard? Yes. Trustee McGrick? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Brown Arena? Yes. And that motion also carries unanimously, so you guys may proceed with the process. Thank you. I have one more announcement, Mr. Mayor. Carry on. Um, There's going to be a town hall meeting on March 28th from 7 to 9 p.m. in Shore Park. 
Okay, March 28th. March 28th. That's a Thursday, correct? I don't know. Yeah, it's a Thursday. Okay, thank you. That's it. Madam Clerk? Item number nine. Application for the Thorpe Expense Fund, grant total $8,220. Make a motion to approve. Second. Property motion by Trustee Harvard, property second by Trustee Abraham. Trustee Harvard, I think this was yours. Yeah, this actual purchase order is for Sarge's Range Service in Des Plaines, Illinois. It's for $8,220. It's for replacing 12 HEPA filters, 8 HEPA filters on the first floor, and four on the second floor. It's for the actual gun range. Um, they removed the contaminated filters as well, and removed the lead and bullets from the bullet trap area on the first and second floor as well. And I, I believe they're going to coordinate this with the police department as far as um, Services, but it's for servicing complete damage. If there's a note on here that says it's going to be offset by some reimbursement from other federal agencies, you know, who is that? Uh, yeah, we have other agencies that use our range and they pay that. us um, monthly for their use of the range. I think we bring in about seven thousand dollars a month. So that's just from from the uh, the, the rental of these things. Yeah, yeah, we have more than enough to cover that. I thought you were giving some more money. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. Question of comments from the board. Trustee Bonzerino? No. Trustee Moore? No. Trustee McGreer? None. Trustee Harvey? No. Trustee Benson? No. Trustee Abraham? No. May I have a roll call, please, Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Harvard? Yes. Trustee Madrid? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Brown Marino? Yes. And that motion also carries unanimously for that expenditure. Item number 10, committee report. Building a public property, Trustee Abraham. Yes, good evening, residents. Uh, if you want to make a comment, uh, from the uh, building department, speaking with Commissioner Upshaw again, please would like to give out a reminder that uh, if anybody's soliciting, please, uh, you can call the, the building department as well as calling the police department. This past weekend, we had a company out here again, knocking on doors in the Beverly section uh, regarding window service, and they asked questions of such as, you know, how many people live here, you know, different types of things like this to try to get into your house. So again, if they're not registered, they have to be registered with the Village of Broadview and they have to do it through the building department. So again, if you have any questions, we suggest <clears throat> that you call the police department because again, it was happening late Friday, um, Saturday is when the police department is not here, so it's hard to check. So we do, I've talked to the chief, the best thing to do is to please call the police department so that they can come out. Because we don't want you opening your doors, people coming in, you know, you never know what happens at this time of the year. So that was the one thing from the building department. As well as from Commissioner Upshaw, the other thing was, again, to be safe with any heaters. Obviously, the weather, it, it, it's still cold and people like to use various heaters. Please check the wiring and the outlets just for fire safety. And I know Chief Gardner also makes those suggestions as well. Another thing, uh, I know uh, Gwen Turner's not here tonight. And she's always announcing the, the, the neighborhood watch. And I'm a big supporter of that. And, I'm on, and I do come to those meetings. So please, if you can tell your neighbors about it, so so we can get bigger turnouts, and it's a very good thing that we have here. So that's the end of my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Trustee Abraham. Business Committee, Trustee Benson. Good evening, everyone. After starting off by saying I have to apologize for being late for the meeting last night, the last meeting uh, was held on a Tuesday, and normally on Tuesdays, I, you know, I'm not able to make a Tuesday because I set out on Mondays, and then they changed the schedule on me and made it Tuesday uh, for certain meetings. So I'm going to try and be more available on Tuesdays um, to get to the board meeting. Uh, besides that, I do want to report on some things that I should have reported on the last meeting that was given to me by the building department commissioner, Dave Upshaw, had some things regarding business licenses that I should mention. The first was we had a business, and this is in the past, remember, 
uh, Martin Express that was closed down for a little while. They are back open. Uh, they had a problem with selling something, uh, selling boiled eggs individually, and their license was, I guess, with both, and I guess here it says expired. Um, their new updated copy was expired, but they are now back up and running. This is all, but I did want to make the announcement because I was giving that to uh, the report on it. The next thing is we did renew our intergovernmental agreement for the provision of environmental health inspection services starting from December 1st, 2012 to November 30th, 2013. What that does is we have a uh, division staff that inspects all of the restaurants here in Washington. They make inspections as required by the food sanitation provisions of the code of orders of the village of all food service establishments and retail food service stores licensed or permitted by the village. They also re-inspect if they have done something wrong and they have violated, uh, they have violations in their business, they go back. Um, they provide us with reports. They also report to the village on any opinions or serious matters. They also testify if they need to and they review plans for new businesses starting up. So I just want to let you all know that we did renew and we do have someone that goes out for these businesses. That concludes my report. Well, no, no, one more thing I want to mention. It's going to be snowing, so please be safe tonight. Thank you, Trustee Benson. Fire, Police, and Civil Service, Trustee Harper. No report. Thank you, Trustee Harper. Great time walk to the hour, Trustee McLear. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor, Board of Trustees, residents. Um, I first want to address the question from Ms. Hopp regarding the water line and sewer insurance. Um, I'm a part of a group called MG MGO. I'm the co-founder of that group. It stands for Municipal Group of Elected Officials. We started that group two years ago and what it is is we have various uh, municipalities in the surrounding area including Westchester, Broadview, Maywood, Brookfield, um, North Riverside and a few others. And what we do is we meet every month and for about a year now we've been talking to groups and meeting regarding water line and sewer line protection. You have a lot of people doing solicitation. We've seen the stuff come through our mail as well. But there's one particular agency who is backed and uh, promoted by the Illinois League of Cities is very credible. They have a very good plan that they like to roll out in the various municipalities. Brookfield is getting going with theirs now. Maywood has already started theirs. <coughs> Public Works Director Matt Ames and I are, spoke, are scheduled to meet with this group tomorrow. And this is um, probably the third of uh, several meetings that we've had. And we plan on rolling this out this spring to allow our, our residents to take advantage of this insurance. And it's a big savings over some of what you've already seen. Um, this company is credible. We're probably going to start with uh, one of the two insurances and then introduce the second of the two and you'll have a total insurance from the, the city's water line to your house. It will allow you to save um, tons of money. You can claim up to $4,000 per claim and um, it's at a minimal cost to you per year. Probably less than 100 for the combined. So we'll give particulars when we roll that program out. Um, we expect to have a very successful meeting tomorrow and you'll be looking for some real good information from us very soon. Um, other than that, um, we've been working hard in public works in getting the snow removed and the streets sal salted for you. And um, I know this coming storm, which is supposed to start tomorrow, is gonna be a big one. They started off talking about three to five inches. Then I heard four to eight inches. Now I'm hearing eight to 12 inches, possibly more, depending on how the wind shifts coming from Minnesota and we might get the lake effect. So. Um, just take note of the two inch um, ordinance with, which keeps us off the street so that the plows can do their job and um, drive safely. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Trustee McGriff. Thank you. Finance Committee, Trustee Morris. Uh, no report. Thank you, Trustee Morris. Finance Committee, Trustee Brown-Marino. Um, yes, I'd like to comment a little bit further beyond what Trustee Morris, uh, I'm sorry. Trustee McGreer just said about the um, water and sewer line insurance. And Ms. Hopp, I, I would very much like to see what you received. I haven't received anything, uh, none of my neighbors that I'm aware of have yet. It was over a year ago that the village board approved a contract with this organization. 
and this company. Uh, from what I recall of it, the part of the agreement was that they were allowed to use the village seal and village logo in their material. And in exchange for that, the village gets a portion of the premiums that are paid by the people uh, that do sign up for this insurance. As I said, I haven't heard anything more about this. I haven't been included in any of the discussions. I do know that there are many companies that offer this type of insurance. Um, I would like to look into it more now that it appears that we're finally starting to see this uh, presented to the residents and find out more about uh, you know exactly how this is being presented but i uh, can i just interject something here it, it, that's and as opposed to just hang on one second feel free to talk to me after the meeting if you have any questions and we'll all be available at right and likewise uh, but what i wanted to say <coughs> is that with the exception of this agreement allowing them to use our logo and information in exchange for a portion of the premiums uh, my understanding is that this is not necessarily, it's certainly not insurance that is offered by the village and not necessarily endorsed by the village. And I would encourage anyone to do their due diligence and, and look around and see you know, if it really is the best, um, the best package out there. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Marino. Thank you. I have a couple of announcements I'd like to make for the clerk's office. Uh, the first announcement is that Lindock School District 92 um, has a vacancy available. Lindock District 92 Board of Education is not accepting applications for the vacancy resulting in the resignation of school board member Terry Sharp. The appointment um, will be from the date of appointments from April 7th to 2015. And um, if you int anyone interested in being a, a filling in, in that, they do have an application process that they go through, and there is a, a criteria for their school board number. Also, um, a second announcement uh, on March 10th, March 10th, 23rd, we still have one outstanding appeal that is in the um, appellate court, waiting for a decision for that. And um, that will be the final, I'm assuming that will be the final process towards the April 9th um, general election. Actually, there are more. I'm sorry. Thank you, there are two more that I have received. Three. Who gave this report? I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> there are two more that I have received. No harm, um, Trustee <laughs> Brown Marino. Once I get notice of that, I'm sure the um, April 9th general election ballot will be certified at this point. There um, haven't been certified um, yet. Just wait for it, go ahead to certify the final ballot. <coughs> and uh, my third announcement is um, <coughs> earlier part of last week I was in the village and I was talking with uh, Chief Jaguar because I have an issue with um, someone had stolen out of the vestibule the um, West Suburban Journal. Now in 2010, I um, talked with Nicole Trotter, who is the general manager of the West Suburban Journal, and asked them for delivery here. And um, what I did is that I would be submitting a FOIA request, so we would be able to see who stole the um, journals and threw them away. And I don't think the West Suburban Journal would be very happy with the time and effort to make sure to bribe to get those newspapers out. So I will be following up and give a report on that once we find out what happened um, with those. And that concludes my report, President Jones. Okay, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, Deputy Chief, I I'd like to give this to you for the uh, Safety Committee review. Uh, looks like it was a second uh, submission. The first one went to uh, the clerk's office. I got the second one here. This is from Ms. Recording. And uh, you guys didn't do that because it was recorded to me. Um, secondly, um, as, as it relates to the insurance on the, the sewer line, we were approached maybe two years ago by a couple different uh, entities to provide, offering to provide insurance for our residents, comprehensive across the town, uh, to allow them to uh, purchase insurance free of, uh, of their own free will. And uh, I certainly encourage you to uh, 
do your investigation, do your due diligence in looking at it. Uh, this particular company, uh, we approved as a board. They, we, they were brought in front of the board and their contract was approved to actually submit their product to, to the residents. I've uh, already received it at my home. I received it a couple months ago, as a matter of fact. And basically what it is is that you, the homeowner, is responsible for the water lines from the meter to your house. You know, from the meter out belongs to the city, from the meter in belongs to you. Uh, damages to those pipes between the meter and your home can be as much as six, seven to ten thousand dollars. <coughs> Not a whole lot of homeowners have six, seven, ten thousand dollars disposable cash that they can just go tap into. For the six or seven dollars a month or whatever the cost is, they're charging uh, for the insurance, it's a minimal fee to make sure that if in fact something like that happens, you're insured. Uh, that was what the purpose of that was and what the idea was behind it. So just, just wanted to let, let you all know on that. Um, as it relates to the traffic light on 14th and 17th, I will certainly look into that as a concern of mine also. Um, as it relates to the West Suburban Journal, uh, it would be presumptuous of us to, to assume that someone took them and threw them away. Uh, someone may have taken them, uh, who knows what happened, but we cannot uh, make the assumption that they were thrown away. Uh, I would not uh, go that far. And uh, it is a free paper. Uh, I've already had the chief order some more, so there will be some more out there in the lobby or in the police chief, uh, in the, the uh, police mm -hmm. station. So I they will be available. Back. Yeah, I got back. you guys, back. I know because the chief already told me he's going to order some more. Uh, as it relates to the legal fees, um, it's unfortunate, but but the, the village of Broadview, uh, like any other municipality, has a responsibility to the taxpayers, and that's to protect their interests. If in fact uh, there's litigation brought against the village or against the village officers, we have a responsibility to respond to whatever it may be. And in the particular case that you're talking about, uh, as, it recur as it occurred with uh, motions to intervene and uh, objections to petitions and things like that, there's got to be a legal a presence uh, representing the, the village, the entity, the village, to make sure that number one, in the electoral process, everything is done properly and in accordance with the law, and to ensure that everybody's rights are protected on all accounts, good, bad, and different. Uh, secondly, the other reason as it relates to the motion to intervene, the village attorneys have got to step in and make sure that our representation and the village's representation is properly represented legally. In other words, we don't get exposed to further litigation by someone being allowed to intervene that could cause us further angst and further problems legally. These are expenses, at this point, seem like a lot, but if we don't do it, the expenses could be compounded 100 times over. So for us to spend $30,000 to make sure that, that we continue to control this particular piece of litigation as it relates to the village of Broadview, it's critical that we do that. Because if we don't do it, we could be exposed to another five or $10 million lawsuit for libel, slander, defamation, yada, 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 so on and so forth. And the same thing applies with the electoral process. We could end up being in court because somebody's rights were violated, their First Amendment rights were violated, yada, yada, yada. And then we would have ongoing, constant litigation and, and more legal expenses. So it's the prudent thing to do is to address it at its lowest possible level. I know it's not comfortable to, to see expenditures of thirty and forty thousand dollars. I don't like it. I don't think any of your board members like it. But it's a necessary. It's, it's it's part of the operating cost of the business at this point in time. And this occurs every four years. Sometimes the expense may be two or three thousand dollars. In a year like this, it happens to be over fifty thousand at this point. Because I, I know there's another outstanding invoice coming. So that being said, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but these are things that have to be done in modern, in today's world, in the course of doing business, and we don't have a whole lot of choice in the matter. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a, a motion to suspend the regular board meeting and adjourn to executive session. That's so moved. Uh, motion by McGreer, second by Hargrid. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed. We're going to be in executive session for a little while to discuss.